welcome my friends to another edition of Tiffin Box TV. I'm your host, Sei Shu, and today I'm speaking with two of my friends, Justin and Mary Morantz. They're both Connecticut wedding photographers and they are phenomenal. Uh, if you've seen their website, your job will drop. I promise you that because their work is really top notch. Uh, they, they're wonderful teachers as well, which is why, uh, or probably how we actually connected a long time ago. I think you, you were speaking at one of the, uh, the local uh, pug groups, uh, and I, I was there, and I was, I was like, wow, you know, Mary Morantz, wow. He's, and, and then you guys went out and took us all out to the, uh, the I think it was the Yale campus, and, and did some posing work, and it was amazing. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah. Um, anyway, guys, thanks for joining me today. Uh, the, the reason you're here, the real reason is you guys are going to have a webinar. You're giving out a, a webinar on the 27th of this month. Mm -hmm. And it's all thanks to Shoot.Edit, uh, one of the best companies out there that's actually doing things like this for photographers. And you don't have to be a wedding photographer to, to sign up. I mean, I, I have to say this again and again because some people think that it's only about wedding photographers. It's not. I mean, you guys are, are, are phenomenal portrait photographers too. Um, so thanks for joining me. You're based in New Haven. Uh, you photograph widely. What is it that you feel um, you're going to be bringing to us uh, for this webinar that's coming up? Yeah, um, so the topic for this one is um, getting standout images in even the toughest of situations. Um, and so, I, you know, we've been shooting um, weddings. Justin's been shooting since 2003, so 12 years. Wow. Um, I know, we're like grandparents <laughs> in this industry. Um, and I have joined in 2006, so nine years for me. And so um, in that time, I think we've seen pretty much any scenario you can imagine. Um, we've seen um, what would have been a two-hour window for portraits get chopped down to seven minutes because one of the seven priests at this um, Egyptian Orthodox ceremony was late, got stuck in traffic, and so it all ran late. Um, we've had about six and a half minutes to shoot a multi-million dollar um, wedding that we'd been hired for in part because we were going to help get them featured. Um, we were supposed to have two hours for that, got chopped down. And so um, what we've kind of learned is that anybody can go and really thrive if you have two hours and perfect light and um, golden sunsets and a field to shoot in. But what do you do if it's raining outside or dark at 4 30 because we live in Connecticut and snows three feet that day or you have six minutes to get that done or seven minutes to get that done and so this is not only how to get by in those times but having some like a very specific set of skills to actually create remarkable images that do even better than when you have two hours in golden light and so we're going to go through like five or six of our favorite images and kind of tell the backstory a which is just interesting and entertaining and then more importantly importantly give like really um, meaty punchy points for what do you do with, not if but when you find yourself in that situation fantastic wow this is you know from, from my own background as a wedding photographer i know i've been stuck in situations where i'm going oh my god what do i do here what do i do where, where's the light where's the light and there's sometimes you know it, it might be just a venue where there's absolutely no you know indirect or uh, or beautiful light coming through the window whatever and you're yeah. just sort of stuck for ideas and um you know this so th this is this is wonderful i mean the fact is you're out there again teaching photographers how to do things um and do th do things you know in a very simple way i mean it's it's not like uh you know it's going to take forever to figure this out but it always helps when someone says this is how you guys can do it yeah it's a, it's, it's a little leg up uh and that's that's what I, I really i really applaud you guys both for um you're so willing to share what you have learned and boy you know between the combined 12 years and nine years i i'm thinking in you know <laughs> yeah that's 21 years right there right uh of, of experience it's phenomenal um t tell me a little bit about your experiences in the past uh in terms of as as teachers as workshop uh instructors what kinds of things are you seeing among photographers these days that have challenged people like what are they what do they keep coming back to you with all the time i know it's lighting is one thing but right. what other thing is like nipping at people's you know fields yeah i mean i think you see the broad spectrum of yeah. challenges and with our workshops especially we get uh photographers that are brand new that are just starting out in their business and their careers and then we also get photographers that have been in it 15 or 20 years that kind of need like a refresh yeah. and so I think you know the the typical answer to that I think would be you know most of the photographers that come in need help with lighting they need help with organizing 
organization on the wedding day. They need help with posing. They need help with directing. Yeah. Um, but then and marketing. I'd yeah. say those are the, the big three: are lighting, posing, marketing, over and over and over again. Um, but I think um, if you kind of had to boil like all three down, like if I could get a little deep for a second, they kind of all come back to fear, right? So it's fear of applying the light and fear of working with people and what mm-hmm. to say to them, and um, maybe you'll make them uncomfortable and fear of. Mark, putting yourself out there, marketing or raising your prices or pricing what's different from what everybody else is doing. Um, so I think it's like a confidence thing. And um, when we teach lighting, something we always say is, this is like exaggerated a little bit, but we always say it's 90% being afraid of it and 10% technical. And it's a little more technical than that, but so much of it is people can't even open their ears to hear it because they're just so afraid of it. Mm-hmm. And so we really try to kind of strip down both. We get rid of the fear and we give them the just the, the nitty gritty technical stuff they need to actually know to go make it happen. Awesome. Now, right before we started recording, I, I asked you, where do you, I mean, uh, in addition to just having all this experience, clearly, you know, you've put everything together in these wonderful guidebooks that you've just started uh, marketing through your website, uh, through your shop. Mm-hmm. Um, tell us a little bit uh, about those guides. I mean, wh- who are they for and, and how are people really uh, you know, embracing them? Yeah, well, um, you know, we were talking a little bit ago about um, just the heart for teaching other photographers, and the webinar we're doing with shoot.edit where all that information is going to, a lot of that information will be included. Um, That's totally free for people to sign up, and um, the reason for that, kind of the reason that we teach is, you know, Justin and I, in a single year, we can shoot, I mean, in the past, we've shot up to 40 weddings a year, and we nearly died, Um, but we shoot, you know, on average about 20 a year. And that's a really great legacy we can leave with our couples. But if we can then also go help other photographers tell better stories for their couples, then it kind of has this ripple effect. And so we um, really love that teaching aspect. Um, Yeah, we've we've done it from the workshop side of things for a number of years now, which is awesome because you can teach people one-on-one, show them hands-on, and and get that demonstration. Um, But but feasibility, it's not always possible for everyone to come to Connecticut or come to wherever we are. Sure, absolutely. uh, Right. the guide and the lighting, the new lighting guide, um, are just ways for us to be able to, you know, reach more photographers and help yeah. them out, um, and also make it a little bit easier for them to, with the price being a, a bit lower than the workshop. Yeah, we tried to keep them really super affordable. The marketing guide we have is like ninety nine. The lighting one's like one twenty nine. They're they're an investment, but they're not like prohibitive, you know. Right. And um, you know, we gosh, we've been able with the lighting guide that just released like two months ago. We've already sold like I don't know a bunch of them. Of, of, I don't I don't know if numbers are appropriate, but we've. The important point is that we're also getting emails from back from all those people saying, I just went through it all afternoon. The, the cool thing about the um, lighting guide is that after every few pages, there's a put it in action, like homework section. So they have to put the book down and actually go do it. Awesome. And, so, and pictures from that. And I think it's just, it's such a, lighting is one of those things that you can literally flip a switch, <laughs> no pun intended, um, and help people overnight. So um, there's it's lighting is both a lifelong pursuit, but it's also if you get the right tools, you can improve overnight. Marketing, that's like, oh, oh gosh, let's put together a plan for the next year. But um, right. lighting is one of those things where when people come to like the lighting workshop, they leave going home feeling like, wow, okay, so I was making it a lot harder than it has to be. Awesome. So, um, one one small little teaser, if you don't mind, uh, from your webinar. Can you share something that that will help people understand how they can go into a situation and come out? smelling like roses <laughs> yes um gosh which one should we do well i think kind of like a cool one is um we uh two years ago two and a half years ago um we went to shoot this december wedding and when we started the day when we were walking down to the first look there was not a single drop of snow on the ground and by the time we went home that night there's three feet of snow oh my goodness yeah and so it was a big connecticut winter it was like the big like fat super wet heavy snow And um, what was happening is every time we went out to shoot, the bride's hair was getting really soaked. And so she was a total trooper during the first look, went out, did everything we asked her to, went in and got her hair redone, essentially. And um, we wanted to take one more little set of portraits after they came out of the ceremony at 4.30. It was dark. They did the, it was a Navy wedding, so they did the sword crossing. And we knew that we had to move really fast or her hair was going to get soaked all over again. And there wasn't time to redo it. So we had three minutes, pitch black, pouring snow. What are you going to do? Um, and just by having a light on a stand, being able to gel that flash to match the background, um, being able to assess it really quickly, being able to move beside them with a setup to track with them as they walk to keep the posing really natural. In three minutes, we got this shot. 
And they went off to the cocktail hour. We went back to uh, start shooting the details. Justin was taking care of that. I put this one photo up on Facebook as a teaser from the wedding, sneak peek. And I went and shot for 10 more minutes with the details. I came back and I checked Facebook and it said 652. I was like, oh, cool. Maybe it's been seen by 652 people. That's awesome. And then I saw it was 652 likes. And I was My like, oh, wow. the Facebook page has been hacked. What's <laughs> happening? Um, I hit refresh and it went to 1,500 and then 2,500, 3,000. And it kept going all night until by the time we got home from the wedding that night, it was at 25,000 likes, 1,000 shares, and a couple thousand comments. And um, I think it's just such a cool example of when you have the right tools, you can take this thing that's supposed to be a negative. It's Connecticut in the winter in the dark. Right. And not only like pass and deliver stuff for your clients, you can actually create something that's really remarkable. So that's kind of what the heart of this webinar is about is not only like how do you get by by the skin of your teeth, but let's take what should be a problem and actually turn it into this incredible thing. Wow. Uh, blown away. Completely blown away. Really. I mean, not because you have 25,000 likes, but the fact that you've actually flipped that, I mean, flip the switch, flip, flip the entire situation on its head from, from yeah. being going south to, you know, really celebrating the moment and making it happen for the, for the couple, you know? Yeah. Uh, so interestingly, you, you write, um, for your clients as well. I mean, I've, I've read your blog posts as well and you, you're, you know, it's very, uh, you have a very popular blog because of the way you write as well. And, and you. it's because you have, I think the mindset is you're writing for your clients more than anything else. And I think that comes through not only from the way you photograph, which you've just shared a story with, uh, you know, sh shared a story about, but also the way you, you treat them on your own website. So this is a great learning moment here for people listening in and wanting to know how to do it right. Uh, guys, follow Mary Morantz and Justin Morantz because they are, they're awesome. Um, Again, the webinar is called Shooting Standout Imagery in the Toughest Situations. And as Mary just told you, I mean, you know, that wasn't any so sort of a, a one-time thing. I mean, for the past 12 <laughs> years, nine years, whatever it is, uh, they've been added, uh, you know, in, in situations where they've had to really come up with solutions uh, on the fly. And they've been they've been awesome. I and mean, if you look at their work online, man, uh, just figure it out. I mean, you, you, you know what they're doing. Wednesday, May 27th, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time is 1 o'clock on my time. I'm going to be watching. I hope you are too. Thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm.